We're starting. Here we go. Here we are. We're here. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> welcome to the show. It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. And uh, welcome to Thursday. Uh, one more day till Friday. Oh, man. I got two shows today. Today, this is the 5 o'clock Eastern Time show live on YouTube and Twitter. I'm on Twitter simulcasting. Ooh, fancy. Hi, Twitter people. Uh, <laughs> and um, got a show at tonight, 8 o'clock also. I'll be doing it on both platforms as well. Welcome to my channel. This uh, show, Traveling with Bruce, uh, is a daily show that I run Monday to Friday, including Saturdays. Monday to Friday, I do a show every day at 5 p.m. But lately, I've thrown in a second show, an 8 p.m. show for Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm kind of testing out the format to see what the reaction is from my viewers. Uh, uh, is, it, uh, is it a popular thing? <clears throat> um, do I get more views at 8 p.m.? Fewer views at 8 p.m. Uh, so I'm kind of studying that. It's been the, I think it's the third week I'm doing this. So I'm kind of watching that. I, I don't know how long I keep it up, though. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it much longer. Uh, but for now, we're okay. I um, want to say uh, thanks to all of you viewers out there. I saw something today on my channel. I was looking at my analytics and my performance. You know, I do this all the time. I am constantly analyzing where we're doing, how I'm going with it. And uh, 196 countries. Uh, I now have um, subscribers from 196 different countries. <laughs> it's just, it's just, wow, I didn't know there were 196 countries. That is really something. Um, I was also kind of watching the uh, the subscriber numbers lately, the, the last couple of days, because last night uh, I was mentioning to some of you folks, those of you who caught my show yesterday, I was mentioning how uh, I wasn't gaining any subscribers for like a day or two, like nothing was happening. The, the count was just sitting there. And I thought that there's something, something's going on. And I was right. I think I'm right. Uh, I was able to detect today and I was able to discover deep in my analytic reports, um, I'm losing subscribers and I'm gaining subscribers. Uh, but this is not uncommon. Uh, it's not uncommon for a channel to turn over subscribers on a regular basis, so usually 10% uh, you know, per year kind of thing, uh, or 10% um, per month or however it works. In my case, I'm so new. This is seven months into this game. I only started this channel in August. So I, you know, I haven't, I haven't got five-year-old subscribers that don't watch me anymore. I only have, my oldest subscriber would be a relative from seven months ago. Maybe they're the ones who canceled out. Well, I'll have to talk to those people. Anyway, uh, I noticed in the last couple of days, about 20 subscribers have gone away. And I am kind of thinking it might not be voluntary. It might actually be YouTube purging the um, the subscriber rules. Uh, I just have this gut feeling that uh, that YouTube is in the middle of a very serious cleansing going on, uh, which they should be, and um, uh, not in any particular order. But one of the things that they are cleansing are um, the, su the, the so-called sub for sub nonsense that was going on in the last month prior to Feb twenty, when the cutoff date was set for whether you were monetized or not going forward with 1,000 subscribers and uh, 4,000 watch time hours. And I have a feeling that there were a number, I know for a fact, there were a gazillion channels doing this. I was constantly getting emails and constantly getting messages. I sub to you, why don't you sub back? And I don't do that. I, I don't want people subbing to me so that I then have to sub back because I, I don't have time to watch 200 new channels. I, I, you know, If I like what you're doing, I'll sub to your channel. Yeah, sure. I'll watch watch your stuff. But I really don't want to sub to a channel I'm not going to watch just to kind of artificially help you reach a certain goal because I'm not going to add any watch time minutes to you and you're not adding any watch time minutes to me. And so I think YouTube has been uh, going through all this activity. The computer printouts, you know, it's all at analytics. The computers are just spitting out all the offenders <laughs> and they're easy to figure out. And uh, uh, they're reversing subs. I think they're reversing out the sub for sub program. So there are probably channels out there who have, uh, probably have like 1,100 subscribers three, four days ago. And uh, in the not too distant future, they're going to be down to 350 subscribers because 800 of them were all fake. They were just, they're just sub for sub. And for every, you know, it's a two-way street, right? If they kick out this sub, they're going to kick out that sub. And there's just going to be a whole bunch of adjusting going on. Now, in my case, I have a suspicion that there were, I bet you there were 30 to 50 people or channels that subbed to my channel and were hoping I would sub back. And I haven't. 
And a bunch of them have already left my channel, but I have a feeling that others are going to leave my channel and uh, or are going to be kicked out by YouTube uh, from my channel. So we'll have to see what uh, what uh, you know how this works out. Just checking my phone here, make sure everything's okay. Yeah, everything's all right. Anyway, so um, the last couple of days, about twenty subscribers have disappeared, and uh, I kind of feel like yeah, it could be YouTube getting rid of these people, which I don't mind because. Uh, when I left the air yesterday, I was at 1,321. The day before, I was at 1,321. <laughs> uh, right now, 1,333. I've added 12 more subscribers than I've lost in the last 24 hours ago. So uh, that's a good sign. Um, you know, maybe maybe that's the end of it, or or maybe that's the first wave of of, a, of several purges to come. I really don't know. Uh, YouTube is not saying. I think they're keeping very you know tight on it. They just don't want to comment right now because they're kind of working it all out. Maybe at the end when they're all done and they get everybody remonetized that deserves to be remonetized, which you know I hope is me. I'm sure it will be me and others like me. Um, then they'll come out with a report and they may well say, "Well, folks, here's what happened over the last um, you know." month, uh, six weeks, whatever amount of time this has been. We've, you know, gotten rid of this many channels. We've adjusted numbers on this many channels. But then again, they may not say anything. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, it may well be I get a little email saying, um, congratulations, you're monetized. Uh, you know, stay, stick to the policies and our rules. So everything will be fine. I'm waiting for that email because I'm not monetized. I am still not monetized three weeks and three days into this um, – this monetization hold that kicked in on Feb 20, uh, I haven't made a penny from YouTube uh, from any advertising whatsoever. And uh, so the only revenue I have is from the generosity of you viewers. And some of you have been just over the top generous to me. I, I so appreciate it. Uh, contributions have come in from uh, the tip jar or super chat, as we call it, uh, where you see the dollar sign on the bottom of your uh, of your uh, of your chat box there where you can uh, send the creator a donation uh and some of you some of you especially overseas you you've chosen to use paypal uh and i do have a paypal logo on my home page it's on the sort of top corner it might be up on this top corner i'm not sure uh and uh, you click on that and you can send me any amount you want uh but as an inducement i've been saying to all of you out there and anyone else uh, that uh um, if you are gifting me uh, $10 or more, I am going to gift you one of these guys. And these are my sports medallions that I have left over from my old retail store from many, many years ago. Uh, and I have here a collection of NFL football. There's the Bears, the Bills. They're, they lost their quarterback, but they're getting one now, I'm told. Drew Brees, there's uh, New Orleans. He's signing a new deal. There's the Falcons. There's the. Uh, the Ravens, there's the Super Bowl champions, and the Lions, oh, the Lions, oh, gosh, the Lions. The Jets, oh, the Jets, what are we going to do? Seattle, uh, oh, there you go, Jacksonville Jaguars. Anyway, there's NFL. Here's NHL hockey clubs. I have a nice selection of NHL teams here. I don't have every single team in both leagues, but I have good selection. And then here I have some NBA teams, a couple of baseball teams. I also have UCLA, USC, and um, <coughs> I happen to have <laughs> some of the services uh, as well. And forgive me, forgive me, regulars. Uh, if you're really bored with this, I'm really sorry, but I have to do this. It's like a, it's like I'm, I'm like NPR now. I'm, you know, I, I have to go into beg mode. Here are a couple of medallions that I found the other day. I have some Beetle medallions. I've got the Air Force. I've got the uh, the Army. I've got Fire Department. I got the Navy, and there is the Star Trek uh, insignia. And uh, these are great uh, for you know, a multitude of uses. Basically, uh, you can stick these on to uh, with a little bit of super glue. And a lot of these have glue on them already. Some of them don't. But uh, if you want the glue on them, you leave them alone, or you add glue like super glue. If you don't want the glue on them, you take uh, a little cotton batten and some nail polish remover, and then this way that just dissolves the glue. And now it's a coin. These become coins. Great ball markers on the golf course. Uh, but if you want to stick them to something like, like a business card holder, if you've got a Chrome business card holder, perfect. Uh, so when you're presenting your business card, you open the flap and you show off your little logo and then you present the card and you close the lid and show off the logo. You know, you show them who's boss. Uh, the wallet can go on your wallet, it can go on the back of your cell phone, it can go on the outside of your computer. Uh, these, these go on glass, metal, 
plastic, wood, leather, uh, you know, foreheads, and wherever, wherever you want to stick them. Uh, you can give it to someone and say, stick it. You can really tell them and not offend them, really. Anyway, those of you who've ordered one, they're on the way to you. Uh, thank you so much again. Let me know when they come in, uh, that they arrive safe and sound. And uh, any of those of you who are, are donating $10 or more, I will gift you one of these. Uh, you send me 50 bucks, I'll send you five of these. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll send you five of them. Uh, I have thousands left, thousands. <laughs> I also have lapel pins. You know that I did a teepee, uh, a story about the Olympic teepee on my video, on my channel. There's a video on that. It's the world ta world's tallest teepee in, you know, in existence. It's Guinness, Guinness World Book record holder. Am I saying that right? Uh, it's located in Medicine Hat, Alberta, and I was instrumental in saving it. I actually helped uh, save and preserve that thing. It used to be the Calgary Olympic teepee for the opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies of the 1988 Olympic Games. Anyway, uh, I have some teepee pins left that helped, helped save that structure. And if you'd like one of those lapel pins, give me 10 bucks. I'll send you one of those. You betcha. So if you are if you know a lapel pin collector, uh, this is a one of a kind. These, these, uh, these are only sold uh, to raise money to, to salvage the uh, the teepee. And I happen to have a few, few left over because I was the creator of the whole thing. Well, that's a whole other story. Okay. Um, what else do I want to talk about today? Uh, yeah, the subscriber count's great. Thank you for that, everybody. Um, Questions are coming in. Comments are coming in. I I mentioned yesterday evening, you know, if you uh, give me thumbs up, so I really appreciate it. And I, you know, I love those. Of course, you all know that, folks. Uh, I see I've already got two thumbs downs today, so you don't like the commercials. I noticed that. Uh, and uh, and then I mentioned also that if you send me a comment on on any video I've ever done in the comment box below, and just say nice video, Bruce. Well done. Hey, way to go. Love the video. Uh, and and then I'll respond to it. That's more engagement between creator and and viewer and, and that makes youtube light up it, it helps another way to help me out if you want to help promote my channel and help me get more exposure out there um any of the videos i've done like these of course these become regular videos but uh, videos like uh, the one i did just the other day i did a video the other day talking about um, um like vacations to go you know how you can use that website to to, to find a deal or uh, picking the right cabin picking the right cruise line the right ship if you share that video on say your home, your your Facebook page to all your Facebook friends, or if you share that video on uh, Instagram or Twitter, if you, if you know how to do that, okay, half the stuff I don't even know how to do. That also expands my footprint out into the uh, you know into the world of the social network world, and that uh, can every time someone watches a video on a share that you've done, it it lights up. And uh, apparently on below this video, like tonight or any of my videos, there's um, there's a, a share button. And if you click on that, it uh, will pop up all these logos from all these social networks. And if you belong to Facebook, you'll see the Facebook logo there. You click on that and you can share my video instantly on your Facebook page right from the from my YouTube channel right out. And if they want to watch a second video, then they'll end up being in my channel. And now they can rummage around and maybe they'll become a subscriber. If you're joining me and you're not a subscriber, welcome to this uh, broadcast. I hope I'm not boring you. There's a subscribe button here, and there's another one here. And if you'd like to become a subscriber, just click on it. The one over here maybe has the uh, bell notification icon. Yeah, if I'm doing it backwards, it's then over here. Because <laughs> I can't, I think it's reversed. I don't know. Uh, if you click on that bell notification icon, every time I do a new video, you'll get a notification that, uh, oh, he's up to something. And uh, you can check me out, and you'll know you won't miss anything. So. Anyway, thanks for all of you and your loyal following of my uh, my uh, trials and tribulations on YouTube. Hopefully, we'll be monetized again real soon, and uh, the Super Chat will be extra revenue for me rather than just the only revenue that I'm trying to survive on. Uh, anyway, let's say, oh, did I miss somebody? Oh, yeah, somebody sent me something here. Uh, Peter, you sent me two bucks. You sent me with a, you got me a hot dog at Costco. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll get to that again. Okay, let's say hi to who came in first. Uh, Loves to Travel was the first one in today saying uh, 77 degrees here in Kansas. Hello, how are you today? Loves to Travel. Welcome back. Uh, Jeffrey Stower is here. Hey there. How you doing, Jeffrey? Welcome to the uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, tell us, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? I'm in Creston, British Columbia, Canada. Just any of you who are new, uh, just so you folks know, it's about 35, 38, maybe, maybe 38 degrees today. It was really cloudy and yucky and, and 
it's been threatening sunshine like maybe the clouds will lift they aren't going away they're um, i can see i can see idaho three miles away i'm just north of the idaho border i can see america but only about up to about four thousand feet <laughs> over that it's shrouded in mystery what are you guys up to i don't know okay uh elizabeth breen is here 69 and sunny in daytona beach 10 more degrees would be nice yeah yeah uh, i could use 10 more degrees too <laughs> Richard Kornamaski is here. Hi. Uh, hello. More thumbs downs. Oh, well, 45 in Philly. Welcome back, buddy. Uh, Wes Morrison, still 70 here in New Braunfels, Texas. Welcome, Wes. Debbie Emanuel saying, hi, Bruce uh, and all. Raining in Northern California still in the low 50s. A good dump of rain happening in Northern California. Samantha Farmer, uh, do the same. People watch both times. Uh, well, not ex some yes there's overlap oh for sure there's there, there's those who watch the five o'clock show and they watch the eight o'clock show and of course i appreciate all viewers you name it uh but i do have different viewers um but um uh so far the five o'clock show is the is the bigger watched show the one that's watched more in 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 term in terms of viewers but i will say the other day i think it was uh about a week ago maybe last week thursday's shows uh the first show aired and then the second show went on and um within 24 hours the second show had more views than the first show so maybe i was a little more giddy or uh, a little more silly or i don't know maybe i did a better show in the evening i don't know just just sort of worked out that way uh but generally the first show outdoes the second show but not by a lot it's it's only like uh 10 difference in views um but uh you know, there, there comes a point where I have to ask myself, uh, can I do two to three hours of uh, live streaming in a day <laughs> and not bore you folks? Because, you know, I want to I want to be engaging and I want, you know, I want to be answering questions you have. I want to bring topics to the to the table to discuss that are you know interesting because otherwise the show will just go downhill and no one will watch anymore. So we have to uh, we have to keep an eye on that. So <laughs> but, yep, some watch both. Uh, Debbie Emanuel is saying. Uh, is this true? I overheard someone say uh, on a live stream yesterday that Carnival is known for larger rooms on ships. Is that true? I don't think so. I don't think that's true. Uh, I, if that is true, we'd all know about it as regulars. We all know about it, uh, but I doubt it. Now, maybe uh, maybe someone made a comment somewhere uh, three or four social media events ago where maybe, um, like, for example, I have a friend of mine who's booked a cabin uh, on uh, the Norwegian Jade uh, last year. They did a repositioning cruise, Florida to Southampton, and they booked a uh, an inside room, and they asked for a handicapped room because um, my my buddy's wife had, had a, a really bad knee, and she was getting ready for an operation, and she was all she, she was with a cane, and she was this close to having to use a walker, and and so she needed this handicap room with handles to help with her, you know, stable herself and so on. Because they were worried that if they were going through some wavy, you know, water through the Atlantic, you know, the the, the ship might move a bit, and she didn't want to get caught off guard because her knee was uh, was by the way it was successfully operated on a new uh, a new knee was installed, and uh, she's doing great. But uh, the room was a bit larger. So that could be the, the 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 gist of the discussion that was had, and then somehow uh, it translated into uh, uh, oh, all cabins are larger. Well, that's not not accurate. But you know, if you're at a party and I whisper something in your ear, and then you whisper something in the next person's ear, and you're supposed to pass a message on thirty people later, the message coming out the end there, nothing like the one we started with. <laughs> so that yeah, could have happened here, uh, but I, I don't. I'm 99.9% .9 sure Carnival does not have, as a general rule, larger cabins than everybody else. No. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce. And everyone, sunny and 66 degrees here in Iva, South Carolina. Welcome back, Pamela. Scott Batchley is saying, hi, Bruce. Uh, sun is out and 62 degrees here in Ventura. Hi to all. Hey, Ventura, California. The sun is shining. It's all good in Ventura, man. Uh, Charles Jordan. Hi, Bruce. How you doing, Charles? Heather Young. Hi, 65 in Kentucky. Sunny, beautiful day. Heather has been sending me all kinds of messages on my on my videos. <laughs> I've been sending her messages back. Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. <laughs> Debbie Emanuel, Samantha. I try to watch both. There you go. Debbie Emanuel. Samantha saying, Debbie, Carnal is the cheap cruise line and rooms are small. I think Royal Caribbean has the biggest. Uh, and then Debbie Emanuel says, Samantha, thank you. That is what I thought. Randy Lucas, greetings from Paradise, California. 
with a high of 38 and snow flurries. If it starts to stick, uh, the wife will need to get get out and chain us up. <laughs> you gotta get up. You'd have to send the wife out there because only she can do it right. I mean, you know, you don't want to screw it up. You know, you send her out there, make sure she gets those chains on the way it's supposed to be. You you just do the safety inspection. How about that? Uh, here's Peter Heckema's uh, $2 contribution. Thank you, Peter. I can get myself a hot dog at Costco. Got a little bit of change left over. Uh, as always, thank you so much. Hi, Bruce. He's saying uh, 70 degrees in Tarpon Springs, Florida today and nice and sunny. Going up to 80 by the weekend. Eight months until our Symphony of the Seas cruise in November. Can't wait. I bet you you can't. Uh, that is going to be something. That ship is about to be turned over. I think it's seven days from now or something like that. And uh, Royal Caribbean gets their hands on her. And here we go with the inaugural cruises, and we'll start it all off. Uh, Tommy Eaton saying, hello from the sunshine state of Florida. I got a lot of Floridians. Have you noticed that, folks? Uh, currently 69 and sunny in Jacksonville, Florida. Fantastic, Tommy. Welcome back. Sylvan Forrest is here. Hi, Bruce and all. It is only 71 degrees to here in Delray Beach. We decided to tough it out. It's got to be strong. Uh, Sylvan, you got to be strong, okay? Uh, wear a sweatshirt and brave the elements to smoke our cigar and rum and coke and drink our rum and coke outside. Good times. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a way to ease the pain of this horrible, horrible Floridian weather that you're subjected to. I know you've been checking out Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're coming to what the middle of uh, we're in the middle of March, so you know the next two three weeks. I mean, come on, people, we're talking late March, April. We got to be into the eighties, nineties again. Come on, cross our fingers for you folks. Uh, Lisa of Lugnet, hello from Indianapolis, Indiana. Lisa, welcome to the show. If you're a newbie, welcome. Uh, tell us what's your high temperature today. Are you a regular cruiser? Have you ever cruised before, or have you not been on a cruise before? We'll 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 straighten you out. We'll help you out if you haven't. Uh, Debbie Manuel, yay, Peter. She saw the contribution being made by Peter. So, Van Forrest, do you have a, a, a Klingon pin or a Ferengi pin? No, no, I, uh, I don't. I'm sorry. And I don't have anything Star Wars or anything like that. Um, I was just thinking here the other day, I was going through some stuff. I did have, uh, I did have a, um, uh, uh, large medallions, like they're the size, they're about two inches in diameter. And I had Batman and Superman, uh, but I can't find them right now. I'm kind of scouring my house going, where is this stuff? Do I still have this stuff? I did sell a bunch of other stuff to another store. And I was thinking, do I sell, did I sell that sh stuff off, get rid of it? Or do I still have that stuff? I don't know. But uh, I'm still looking. So if I find something unique and interesting, uh, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I'll show it off to you. Uh, Teresa McFarland is here. Hi, Bruce. Zero Celsius in Waterloo, Ontario today, uh, Teresa. You're just, you know, you're a little cooler than me, but not by much. We're, we're 36, 37, so we're kind of in the same boat here. Gary M. Uh, hi, Bruce. Uh, one degree in Petrolia, Ontario. Petrolia, Ontario. Perhaps you have previously commented on this topic. What is it like cruising out of San Juan? For example, how is the Norwegian Cruise Line port? Uh, welcome, Gary, if you're a newbie uh, to the channel. And uh, good question. I was just going to bring up San Juan uh, on this channel, on this chat as well. Um, I might as well do that right now because I'm just about caught up. Let me just let me just say hi quickly to two more people. Loves to travel. Did said, do you think the, the Cove balcony would be all right to get? Uh, and then, Samantha Farmer, do you have a Bitcoin pin? No, I don't have a Bitcoin pin. All right, back to Gary M's question, first of all, in Petrolia, Ontario. Um, Cruising out of San Juan. Well, <clears throat> uh, since the hurricane, uh, things have been, uh, they were very dicey right afterwards, obviously. Uh, the, the first, boy, the first two months, um, like October, November, even into December, sketchy, uh, sketchy situation with uh, reliability, uh, not of the cruise ships, uh, because cruise ships have no problem coming and going in the port through San Diego, the port is open. The Coast Guard made sure that the port was safe to enter and exit from, you know, after the hurricanes have passed. Uh, so that isn't the problem. The problem is unfortunately with the, the uh, infrastructure on land. And for tourists um, uh, taking a cruise out of San Juan, um, the problem is getting in and the problem is getting out. 
of San Juan, of Puerto Rico as a whole. Now, if you live in Puerto Rico, you know, you're, you're going to eventually get home, uh, you know, by land, by car, or bus, what have you. But if you're flying in or out, this has been an issue for travelers. The biggest problem has been flying in or out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. And the first inklings we got of this were from Canadians, by, by the way, who uh, had flown in on WestJet or Air Canada from uh, Ontario uh, and uh, were, were on a cruise, come off the cruise ship, uh, go to the airport, go to the WestJet counter, and there's no WestJet counter. Signs are gone, no staff. Uh, they're looking around and walking around. They end up going to information. They find, you know, they finally found someone to talk to. What happened to WestJet? And then they looked on their phones, and WestJet announced that they'd canceled all their flights for the year. And same with, I think, Air Canada. I think Air Canada may have canceled their flights too, or, or maybe they haven't yet. I'm not sure. Or maybe they did for a while. But I know WestJet, they did a full-blown, we're not here for a year. And how do we get home? These people are wondering. And, and they're, they were told by WestJet, well, we sent you a notification. Well, they didn't book through WestJet directly. They booked online through an online seller, maybe Expedia.com or you know, Priceline.com. Uh, and they didn't get any messages from Expedia or anyone else uh, that WestJet had canceled <laughs> their return flight. And there was no way for them to get home uh, without booking their own flight. And so these folks were now stranded at the airport uh, with reduced schedules. Long lineups, no working air conditioning down there. That airport was hang was hung on, was put together with duct tape. And uh, you try and book a flight today or tomorrow off an island, one way back to Canada, no advance reservation uh, from an airline, and they know they got you. They got you. And so Canadians were paying 2000 bucks one way to get home. It was just terrible. And it wasn't a direct flight. It would be Miami or Tampa or uh, or Fort Lauderdale and then connect to, you know, Cincinnati or connect to Chicago and then connect to – yuck, uh, nightmare. Anyway, uh, going forward, though, after that, uh, the, the trials and tribulations continued because airlines like, um, like uh, JetBlue, uh, United, uh, American, they weren't up to their full schedule back to San Juan, Puerto Rico for months. They were running uh, half their schedule, third of their schedule. Why? Because the uh, the air traffic control system had been destroyed uh, by the hurricane, and they were running off of the uh, portable radar systems from the uh, U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Army, the Marines. I mean, the, the emergency FEMA people, and uh, they had to get their systems reinstalled. Uh, you know, and that takes months because you got to order it. It's custom built for your airport, and uh, an absolute mess. In the meantime, power outages island wide. Uh, and unreliable power distribution in Puerto Rico just continues to this very day. And I had a question last night on my channel, again, asking about uh, uh, Puerto Rico. I had a viewer here uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, was telling me that uh, she was booked on a cruise out of Puerto Rico. And what was I hearing? And I told her what I knew at the time. And I said to her, when you get back, if you get back, Please tell us what happened and how it goes. So I'm hoping I will hear from her. I'm hoping she's on the cruise now. Like, I'm, you know, it all worked out. She got there, got on the ship, <laughs> and we'll be able to get off the ship and off the island, and everything will work out. And then she'll come back to our channel and let us know how it's going. So I'm watching for her to come back to us, and we'll, we'll have more information. So that's what I'm hearing uh, about, the, uh, the, uh, about the island. Now, the Norwegian Cruise Line port the the i i have not used it myself if anyone has used it you can let me know um has anyone sailed out of uh, san juan puerto rico using norwegian cruise lines uh please please tell us and how how was the experience uh i've never heard um complaints about it as for anything specific that was like that stood out um as a matter of fact i've never heard anything bad about any uh uh, uh embarkation procedures out of San Juan. I've never heard anything negative. So, uh, but if anyone has any information, please do share with us and we'll pass it on to you. I hope that answers some of your questions uh, or, or helps you there. Uh, but if you are going to book, by the way, if you are going to go for a cruise out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, on whichever cruise line you want to use, my recommendation, no matter whether it's San, San Juan or even it's Fort Lauderdale, if you're coming from Ontario, from Canada, 
um, or from you know thousand miles away in the United States, and whether it's one flight or two flights, I usually recommend flying in the day before on any flight, whether it's out of uh, any cruise, whether it's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, um, um, Port Canaveral, um, any of those ports. Same with New Orleans. Same with uh, Galveston. Get there the day before. Grab a hotel, and then the, that night or the next day, depending on how how late you got in, you'll be able to buy a few provisions on land to take with you onto the ship because your baggage will be weighed at whatever airport you're departing from. You're going to have restrictions on what you can take in your baggage, especially liquids. Uh, but if you want to bring on some couple bottles of wine or or bring in some uh, some pop, like some, some sodas or some energy drinks or, or you know, uh, alcoholic iced tea or whatever you like, then shove that in your luggage, uh, buy it, uh, you know, the night before or the morning of departure um, in the in the departing port city, find a Costco or a Walmart or a Kmart or a big grocery store, you know, get the land price, the, the locals land price, and uh, you'll save some money that way. Uh, but from San Juan's perspective, from that angle, um, at least the day before, maybe two days before, but at least the day before you want to be down there just in case there are flight problems, weather issues, flight delays, um, you name it. Now getting out. Um, okay. If you've booked a flight for the day that your ship gets in, the chances of your ship being late returning to San Juan are slim, very light, very slight. Uh, and then you can leave that day. But you know, if you're going to make a vacation of it, you might have booked a uh, one-week stay at a resort in San Juan, in Puerto Rico. But again, uh, all bets are off this year. Uh, I, I just don't know which resorts have been fully rebuilt. A lot of them were heavily damaged, badly. And if not the resorts badly damaged, they were you know damaged somewhat but repaired, the power to the resorts has been damaged badly and resorts are probably running off of generator or at least they have backup generator in case the power goes out but they may only have partial power when the actual power goes off and that could affect your air conditioning and in uh, san juan puerto rico uh i don't have anyone watching me on my live streams and i think i know why <laughs> one they don't have reliable power <laughs> but two <laughs> Uh, they probably don't have a reliable internet either. It's coming in and out. Um, but I've not had anyone from San Juan say, oh, everything's great down here. The resorts are up and running. Everything's fantastic. We're getting no communication from San Juan. Puerto Rico. Like nothing. It's a third world country and it's U.S. territory. So, yeah, it's pretty bad. Anyway, there's there's a you know a little rant for you and a little comment for you. I hope that helped. I hope it didn't bore you. <laughs> Gary M is saying, oh, thank you. Our friends missed their cruise because they flew in the same day the ship left. Transfer issues because the plane was late. What did I just say for an hour? Yeah, isn't that something? It, it, Gary, it's unbelievable. It's just, it is really sad. And the prices for the cruises, I've commented on this too, and so have my viewers. They're cheap. They're a bargain. You can get a balcony or a, you know an ocean view room for a great price for a one-week cruise. If only you could get to the darn ship. And that's, that's the issue. The ship's not going to wait. They got to go. Yeah, it's too bad. Um, now, loves to travel is asking me. Do you think the Cove balcony would be all right to get? The Cove balcony, uh, loves to travel. You got to help me here. Um, are you referring to? Is that is that like a spa level? Is that a? Who is it and what is it? Uh, is it a singles balcony? Is it a? Uh, is it the aft? Is it? Uh, I don't know what what you got. So I, I could use some help there. Um, what do we have here? Oh, San oh, Peter Heckam is saying San Juan has a nice cruise port. We we sailed. Uh, okay. And uh, I've been in San Juan like for the day, and it looked great. It looked fantastic. Uh, um, Peter Heckam is also going on to say we sailed out of there four years ago, but don't know how the building survived the storm. Yeah, that's right. We That that I don't know either. Uh, Sylvia's here. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Bruce. 62 and windy. Very nice in Greensboro, North Carolina. Welcome back, Sylvia. Um, and then we've got Peter saying again, Peter Heckman, it was a very, it was very humid on the island. Yeah, it really is. Don't know how they are surviving without air conditioning. Exactly. Oh, it's just, it is killer bad. Um, okay. He loves to travel saying lower level on the carnival. Uh, you know, I, boy, um, I can't, I can't answer that question personally. Loves to travel because I've never been to, um, on a carnival ship and certainly, uh, uh, I, I the cruises I've had, I don't want anything to do with the lower level. 
I want nothing to do with it. Even if I'm on an inside unit, I want to be up high. I just, just want to be up off the waterline. And uh, when I get off the ship or off uh, out of my room, I should say, even if I'm a, if I was in an inside room, if I get out of there, I'm going down the hallway and I might only be one level away by the stairs to the deck where the buffet is or the spa is. And that's just my personal choice, okay? Now, the room you're talking about, that that level, you may find some really good deals for, for room rates down there. And maybe that's why you're asking me. Um, if it's a budget decision, I get it, um, you know, um, yeah, but you, you will get what you pay for. Uh, you're not going to find that, well, this is just like being in a suite, not that, You've ever been in a suite? No, I've never been in a suite, but it won't be. It'll be an inside room on the lower level. <laughs> and uh, but if the price is right, and you know, you just consider that room to be a place to sleep and to wash up in the morning, you know, quick shower, you know, and then get out. And the rest of your ship is your living room, your rec room, your your uh, recreation center, swimming pools, spas your your dining room you know for your food the rest of the ship is what you where you spend say 18 hours a day on and you only spend six eight hours a day in your room you can live with that you got a good deal on that room i say way to go yeah absolutely um let's see now uh um steve bartley saying my wife's friend in puerto rico not san juan however only has intermittent power with a generator we recently sent her rat and mouse traps. It's it's awful, and uh, no matter how many they catch, they're not catching them all. They're only catching them in their neighborhood, in their immediate thirty foot. Yes. These critters are everywhere. Um, you know, if if they're there, they're everywhere. It's 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 terrible. It is just terrible. Um, Aluni uh, Ulani is here. Ulani Kalam. Carnival Cove Balcony Deck 2. We had one on the breeze in December. It was great. Uh, storms out there. The waves were great. Okay, so there you go. Uh, loves to travel. It's a balcony, but water level. Okay, thank you for that. Loves to travel. See, I told you I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, and that's the beauty of this live stream. If I don't know, someone else does who's watching, and we can get the info. Yeah, look. Um, Aluni has, has booked it, and she liked it. She loved it. So, yeah, if you can get that room at a really good price, take that room at a great price and enjoy. Absolutely. Uh, it's a unique perspective for that you you know, you know won't have maybe on other cruise lines, perhaps. Balconies may not be as low as those towards the waterline, but, hey, you you're, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Enjoy. Absolutely enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Ulani, for that answer, uh, for, for watching and, and chipping in on that. That's fantastic. Uh, today, I was going to also mention, other than emails that I've been getting and, and questions, I had a couple of other uh, uh, comments. Multi-gen cruising. Uh, got that question like late yesterday, later in the day yesterday. I've done, <coughs> I've done two videos where I've mentioned multi-gen cruising uh, as a term, and uh, I've explained it. And, and in a nutshell, it's three generations going on a cruise at the same time. So it's grandma, grandpa. Uh, the daughter or the son and or the wife or the husband or not, and the grandchild or more. So it can also be grandma alone or the grandmas and or grandma's grandma and grandpa or grandmas and grandpas, any combination of that generation, you know, one, two, three, or four of them, uh, and the grandkids with no parents in the middle, none of that. So it's a skip gen. That's a skip gen deal. A super skip gen. So we got the grandparents and the grandkids going on a cruise. Now it might be, you know, it might be grandma and one child, one grandchild, two in a cabin. It might be uh, grandma and and the daughter and the granddaughter. The combinations, of course, as you know, could be endless. Um, but it's becoming a very, very popular thing uh, because grandparents have figured out as have as have. Uh, um, you know, adults, <laughs> moms and dads, you know, um, we can't do these uh, family trips anymore like we used to. Uh, you know, back in the 60s, when mom and dad had the station wagon, we'd all pile in there, all five kids <laughs> or three kids and the dog. And the back of the station wagon would be packed with camping gear. And then dad would be towing a tent trailer 
and we'd go camping as a family. And of course, mom and dad had the energy and the uh, cash flow and the, and the drive to, and the, you know, the limited time, the two week holiday, the one week holiday to get out there and take those kids on a trip. There was no such thing as a cruise ship in 1965 that the family of four could afford for a one week cruise in the middle class uh, um, uh, demographic. Not a chance because in, that, in the 60s to take a one week vacation on an ocean liner that was actually doubling as a cruise ship in the wintertime, you're talking money that's unthinkable today. Unthinkable for us. Um, so the, the holiday was, well, we might, we might drive down to Florida for some winter time, but we'll just stay in a hotel, a hotel motel run by mom and like a mom and pop motel, uh, somewhere on the beach near, uh, Sarasota, Florida. I did that with my parents. Um, but uh, that was then this is now. So now you've got parents who are in their thirties or forties ish with children ish. Um, and of course this is the modern world. So folks, every combination of parent exists today too. single parent, uh, same sex parents, uh, you know, my wife and the boyfriend, because she's divorced from the husband, the husband and the girlfriend, because he's divorced from the, you know, it's a combination, right? It's a whole new, a whole other world. Anyway, the grandparents are powerless to, you know, change the circumstances, except for one thing. They could make a suggestion and say to the parent or parents that uh, we're going on a cruise to the Caribbean for a week. Uh, you want to come with us with the kids or you want to just come with the, just have the kids come with us and we'll, we'll take the kids off your hands for a week. How about that? So we get some grandkid time. You get alone time. And so mom and dad stay at home or go to Vegas <laughs> or Disney world. And they do their own little thing or go on their own cruise. Uh, or the three generations go together and, uh, it might be, that it makes sense now we have four adults two grandparents two parents and two children let's get a suite rather than a balcony room or or something like that why don't we get instead of two balcony rooms adjoining why don't we get a suite that can handle eight people we got six of us we have two bedrooms and then we got the pull-out couch for the kids perfect well now if a, a split can be arranged between the grandparents the parents to work out the deal, uh, then that might work. Now, reality sets in for a lot of folks where, you know, grandma uh, is uh, 78 and she's got all her faculties and she's as sharp as a tack and uh, she survived granddad 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, the daughter or the son, uh, you know, um, uh, they're in their forties and they're struggling. They're just, they're just not making it, you know, like the generation before tough times. Uh, they're getting by, but they're not getting far. Uh, and so grandma says, I'm buying. I'm paying. We're going to grab a balcony and um, we're going to have uh, two, two, two beds, a, a twin bed for grandma, a twin bed for, for mom, and then pull out the couch for the one or two kids. Or we'll bring in a cot or we have a fold down unit in the bed. Again, bunk beds are in part of the unit. It's all prearranged. But grandma's foot in the bill. Um, this is grandma's gift to the family. Uh, here we go. Or it's grandma and grandpa's gift to the gang. We're all going. Or it's two grandmas, two surviving grandmas, and four grandkids. <laughs> and this is the last time we're babysitting those kids because they're getting too old for us, and we're getting too too old for them. Uh, but we're going on this uh, one-week cruise with these kids, and we're going to do it on Disney. We're going to do a Disney cruise with these kids. And uh, you parents just stay home and work and keep paying the bills and We'll take the kids off your hands for a week. This is skip gen cruising. And this is huge because uh, it's my generation, the baby boomer generation that were, you know, today's uh, a 62 year old actually thinks he's 42, you know, in here he thinks he's 17, but you know, he's not. But uh, yeah, that's what's happening out there. And the cruise lines know it. They know it. They're on it. And uh, this is becoming incredibly popular. You're going to hear all about it. If you don't already know about it as it is, and I was getting this, I, I get this question from time to time to time. It just kind of just kind of comes in because people are talking around the dinner table. And, uh, you know, if grandma and grandpa are getting on and they're reaching that uh, age where 
you know, mom and dad, you know, the, the 40 year old parents, the 35 year old, 30, 45 year old parents are looking around the dinner table on Sunday night and they're saying, they're whispering to themselves, mom and dad are getting on. And, um, you know, they're not going to be doing very many more trips uh, going forward. They can't, they can't right now. They cannot now take a trip on their own. No. Uh, maybe dad lost his license now because he's, you know, failing eyesight. Uh, reaction to to you know emergencies it's just not there um you know mom's hip is starting to really bother her she's on a walker uh they cannot go on a vacation um but they would love to and so the uh, the the uh you know the children they gang up and they they sit around and they talk you know alone uh or they're texting <laughs> they're texting and uh, they're scheming up a, a trip and they're saying, okay, we're going to do this one more time. We're going to do this big old send-off holiday. Uh, the, the, we're going to take care of mom and dad. There's there's like six of us. There's three kids, three spouses, and the six of us are going to ensure that mom and dad, we're going to take them on a cruise with the grandkids, and we're all going, and we're going to do it in two units, two cabins, three cabins, maybe a big old suite, and we'll just – you know, cover the cost between all six of us, or maybe grandma and grandpa are, are more than happy to pay a big portion of the trip. They just can't go on it themselves. And so the kids are saying, relax, grandma and grandpa, we're all going and we're going to all take turns taking care of you. And we're all going to make sure that it all works out and we'll take, we'll handle the aircraft, the, the airplane tickets and accommodations on the plane. We're going to handle transfers. We're going to handle the, uh, the, uh, boarding the embarkation we're going to handle uh, you know in the rooms themselves and on the cruise for the whole week uh grandma and grandpa are never left alone because <laughs> they might be up to hanky panky we got to watch those two <laughs> but you know one of the six two of the six are rotating and are are handling grandma and grandpa it could be that kind of a deal and the unspoken word is it's the last time Tears are flowing, emotions are riding high, but it's the big one. It's the big one, and Grandma and Grandpa know it. They've been telling the kids, "We can't, we can't take a trip anymore." We're, you know, we're, and the kids are going, "What are you talking about? We can do it." But then they know deep down, no, Grandma and Grandpa, we can't, we cannot just drop them off at the airport and see, say, uh, say, see you in two weeks when you get back. It's not going to work. They have to be looked after and helped out. Maybe Dad forgets his meds to take them on time, you know, all this stuff, all the little stuff. And so this is the way for the children to pay back with time and energy uh, to get mom and dad that one last uh, trip. And the grandkids were there uh, to enjoy it all. And they're probably oblivious to most of it, especially the youngins, the real young ones, the six-year-olds, five, six, seven-year-olds. They don't know. They don't care. The teenagers know, yeah, this is, this is mom and dad. Taking care of grandma and grandpa one last time. Anyway, skip Jen cruising. It gets me emotional. It's amazing. Anyway, there you go. Let's see. What are the comments? Because they're coming in. Uh, let's see here. Loves to travel. Thank you, Aluni. Aluni is saying the price was good. Uh, but FYI, you're the last to get off the boat. <laughs> if you're in that cave balcony, you're the last to get off the ship. Don't have a first thing in the morning flight. Have an afternoon flight out of town. Okay. <laughs> Samantha Farmer, family reunion on the cruise or just live full time on it. And there's her website, folks. She is pushing her website. Andrea uh, Tuckman is saying, uh, Bruce, we had plans. Uh, we had planes back in the 60s. <laughs> I know, I know. But they weren't cheap. Uh, there were no Southwest planes in the 60s, $39 each way. Uh, okay, Andrea. <laughs> Peter Heckham, a neighbor just told me he booked a balcony on the MSC Seaside. Oh, we got a gambler. We got a gambler for under $1,000 for two. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Didn't know anything about the smell. Oops. Doesn't watch Traveling with Bruce. He doesn't watch Traveling with Bruce. What's wrong with this guy? I broke the news to him. Cruise is in a month, so hope the situation is better. Peter, Peter, you got to tell him to subscribe to my channel. I mean, help this guy out. He's desperate. <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, a lot of folks just don't 
they don't pay attention to it. They, they see it there. They saw the price. That's what this was. Two people in a balcony for less than $1,000 on a brand new ship in the Caribbean. I'm the greatest shopper in the world. I'm a god. Yes, you are. <laughs> now, what about that smell? Uh, yeah. Why is it this cheap brand new ship in the Caribbean? Why? Can you get Symphony of the Seas for one week? Balcony for two for under 1000 bucks. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Peter Heckema, MSC is advertising like crazy on TV here in the Tampa area. And I know why. Peter, you know why. Because you can drive there. You can drive there now. You can go this week. You can go next week. They've got cancellations up to here from people all over the planet, the world. They're getting cancellations everywhere. People are coughing up 20%, 25% penalty fees to cancel the MSC Seaside, not to go on it because of what they're hearing and what they're seeing and what they're, what's going on. And uh, MSC is going, we got, we got all these empty cabins. We got to get, we got to get onboard spending, get the cabin sold for 450 bucks, 425 a person to get bodies in there, get two bodies in that cabin. They'll spend money in the bar. They'll spend money at the casino. They'll spend money in the specialty dining, but just get them on the ship. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. That's why it's a, a deal. Peter, thank you for telling me that. I really appreciate it. Loves to travel says, do you know if a plan, uh, it's, it's, it's saying, do you know if I plan a back-to-back -back cruise on the same ship, do I have to get off and then back on or can I just stay on without getting off? Loves to travel. That is a great question because why? It's on my list of what to talk about today. <laughs> Thank you very much for asking. Um, here's the deal. Back-to-back uh, -back cruising. Uh, if you book a back-to-back -back cruise, um, what you do is when you get to embarkation, when you get to the terminal for the, your first of the two cruises, you're checking in and you're telling the agent, I'm on a back-to-back. -back. I'm taking the ship on two consecutive cruises. And the agent will check you in. Uh, automatically for the first one and make notes about the second one. But the second thing you'll do is that the agent will likely tell you uh, you're booked in the same cabin for, for both cruises, likely, most likely. Uh, and then she'll, he'll, he or she will tell you when you get on the ship, uh, uh, just check in with uh, room services at the front desk and just, you know, let them know you're a back-to-backer and make sure that their systems on board the ship match the website and the terminal and it's all cool. Now, to answer your question specifically, um, you do not have to un you don't have to pack up. You can leave everything in your room. Uh, you don't have to put your bags out in the hall the night before or anything else. L just stay in your cabin. Uh, you get to uh, sleep in. <laughs> you get to go to your buffet whenever you want to go to your buffet. But here's the deal: the ship. Uh, I'm going to assume uh, uh, loves to travel that you're departing from the United States and coming back. To the United States. Um, what will happen is uh, by about 10.30 in the morning, the last of the passengers will have left the ship probably. By 10, 10.30, you'll be one of the last passengers left. There might only be a couple of hundred of you who are back-to-backers. You're not the only one. Um, what you do now is you'll be instructed by that front desk that you're checking in with. Uh, they'll have told you uh, the night before, the day before, you'll have had a notice in your room's uh, uh, envelope holder uh, beside your door there, there'll be a notice telling you what to do. And it'll tell you that, uh, you know, 10.30, come on down to the so-and-so bar uh, with your passports, the, the, all travelers. And you'll be escorted to the um, gangway, the, the departure gangway, and you'll walk as a group to the customs, the U.S. Customs uh, border officials who all know all these folks coming are back to backers. They're, they're, they're not getting off the ship. And they will process your passport right there. And then you'll just walk right back onto your ship and you're back to your room, put your passports back in your vault and enjoy the facilities. You're the only ones on board. And uh, a number of cruise lines will have a party. They'll have a function just for you guys. Uh, a welcome back to the ship uh, for back to backers. And it might be a round of free drinks or uh, or some cake and desserts and uh, treats and 
some staff to, to, to welcome you back. And you got the ship all to yourself for like the next four or five hours until the, the newbies start trickling in and they come in around 11, 12, one, you know, you know, the routine and uh, there you go. Okay. So there's your, there's your answer. Now I will say also that um, another thing to keep in mind, folks, uh, if you're thinking about a back to back cruise, any line, I don't care what line it is. If it's, if it's one of the, uh, uh, Norwegian cruise ships, um, or one of uh, Royal Caribbean or Celebrity because they own Celebrity, or any of the Carnival line. So it's Carnival, Hall in America, Princess, Cunard. You're doing a back to back. Now, whether it's the same ship or the same line, like say a Carnival ship and then another Carnival ship, you will have to unpack, get off the ship, get on the other ship. You know, of course. But if it's back to back, the same ship. I will tell you this, you want to be a shareholder of the company. You want to take advantage of the shareholder benefit program that exists for shareholders of these three publicly traded corporations. Because if it's a one week cruise to the Caribbean, for an example, um, you can get a $100 cabin credit for the first cruise and another $100 cabin credit for the second cruise just by being a shareholder of the company. As long as you own 100 shares, and they're in your brokerage account, your investment account, uh, however you've done it, a month before the cruise starts, the first one, you want to have those shares in there. I would say at least a month before. Technically, it could be 15 days, but make it at least 30. Own 100 shares in any of those three companies, uh, depending on which ship you're going to take, whichever cruise line you're going to take. You've got $200 in shipboard credits coming to you. That covers tips for one of you for the whole two weeks. Well worth your while. If you're taking three back-to-backs, $300 in credits, one every week. So uh, this is where the shareholder benefit really kicks in uh, big time because you're, you're getting $200 right now, right off the get-go. All right? So keep that in mind, too. Uh, but if you are doing back-to-back -back cruises, and the first one's with Norwegian, and then you're getting off that ship in Tampa, and you're turning around four hours later and getting on a Carnival ship, for a one week cruise. It's a back to back, but it's on two different cruise lines, two different cruise ships. Well, you're going to have to own 100 shares of Norwegian and 100 shares of Royal Caribbean or Carnival, whichever the other one was. And you'll still get your $100 credit, but you got to own 100 shares of each of those cruise lines. It's a little more, more pricey to do that, but you only have to hold the shares long enough to own them a month before the cruise started. And then you can sell the shares, you know, the month after you get off the ships, you can sell them back into the market. And enjoy the hundred dollar credit in the meantime. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Uh, uh, that was the thing about the MSC. Oh, wow, that was a story. Um, okay. Charlie Bomb is saying hi, Bruce. Carnival is increasing the fast to the fun uh, pass, and our Royal Caribbean is improving Coco K, uh, but uh, but uh, P roving evening, but PM roving evening. But P, I'm not sure what that means. I do know about that upgrade because that's on my to-do list as well. Um, I know about the uh, Royal Caribbean Coco K story, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, pricing everything. That's what Charlie Pro is saying is pricing everything. Um, but pricing everything. Okay, okay, Charlie, gotcha. Okay, so uh, Royal Caribbean is is improving Coco Bay, but they're gonna they're gonna price everything. That's right. Samantha Farmer saying loves to travel. You stay on. Um, uh, Crash 3X is here from Ottawa. How you doing, Crash 3X? My number one. Uh, loves to travel saying yes. Crash 3X saying they make you wait till everyone is off uh, the, the, the boat, I'm assuming is what you're saying. Then staff will walk you out to the embarkation desk. You get your new card and you walk back on. All this happens before other passengers arrive. There you go. Um, again, the cruise ship people know who is back to backing. And they're going to take good care of you. You're, you this is not going to be hard to figure out. And uh, you'll be good to go. Crash Reacts saying that is for the back-to-back -back cruises. Exactly. Uh, Ulani uh, saying, we did multi-gen cruise a couple of years before my dad died. So happy we did. Great memories and lots of pictures. There you go. There, there you are. Uh, it's your, this, this uh, thing, this, this multi-gen cruising uh phenomena is going to become quite a normal thing going forward and it could be priceless absolutely priceless for the two generations left behind because uh when mom and dad go they're gone forever 
and uh, you can't get them back. And and that's it. And for grandkids who are, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, you remember, folks, what do you remember? If you're, you're my age, you're 62 like me, what do you remember of your 14th year? How much? Not a lot. The only way you're going to get memories back for as a as a 62 year old when you were 14, the the one the one weapon we have that we can use are photo albums. And how many photos did we take in the 1960s and 70s and 80s when we were that age before the invention of the smartphone, the digital camera, uh, the video camera? I mean, there were movie cameras, yeah, but you had to send the film in. There were film cameras, yeah, you had to send the film in. Either, even if you did a one hour developing, you had to do that. And so we didn't take 200 photos for my 14th birthday. They took four, three. Film was expensive. Getting it developed cost money. And so uh, today... A 14-year-old or 10-year-old with a birthday party or a 14-year-old having friends at the water park for their birthday party, every kid is taking photos of the event and videos and every adult. There are thousands of images, thousands. You'll never see them all. But going back for us with our parents, um, being able to take your mom and dad on a one-week cruise, all-inclusive, you know, or, you know, practically all inclusive this might be it this might be the trip now you know they may live another 10 years yeah 20 but this is the year that this trip happened and you've got your smartphone and so does your wife or husband and your kids and everyone is documenting it and for those eight-year-olds 10-year-olds 12-year-olds you've got documentary evidence either in moving pictures with sound where the kids are sitting between grandma and grandpa on the lounger, uh, in the cabana, up by the pool deck, or at dinner time, formal night. Uh, everyone got dressed up for formal night because grandma and grandpa were getting dressed up for formal night. It was the big thing to do. It's this one last trip that might be the most memorable of all. It's your chance. Don't let it slip you by, people. You can never get time back. Once time goes, it's over. Uh, Crash3x is saying, I suggest not to do uh, B2B, back-to-back -back on the same ship. Everything will be the same. Shows, food. Uh, Teresa M. does one ship, then gets off and gets on a second ship. That way you've got variety. It, it, I agree with that, uh, Crash3x, on one level. Absolutely. You're, and you're right. Of course, if, it, if they have a separate itinerary and a separate cruise line, it's all different. On the other hand, um, there are those who will do a five day back to back, you know, five day, five day, or a four day and a six day, just the way the schedule works out. Um, I do notice uh, on vacationstogo.com that uh, Hall in America will offer the Western Dam or the Euro Dam for a Caribbean cruise. It's a 14 day cruise. It's actually a back to back cruise because <laughs> you could buy a seven day segment or a seven day segment, or you could buy this 14 day segment, and uh, they have those too. Uh, Depends on your age and what it is you want out of the trip. Um, you know, if you're like my wife and I, if we could do two weeks on the same ship and it's the same itinerary, we might just go for it. Because the first time we go to Ojo Rios, we'll do this. The second time we go to Ojo Rios, we might do that. Uh, Cayman Islands. Uh, now, of course, I've lived there, so you know I know the island well. But the first time we might, uh, the last time I was I rented a car, we drove to Rum Point. There was virtually nobody there from the cruise ship at Rum Point because it's the other side of the island and it's, it, was, it was costly. It cost us a bit of money, but that was our little treat to ourselves because we used to go to Rum Point the occasional weekend with our daughter uh, when we lived there. But uh, if we're going to go to Cayman twice, you know, one week and then the next week, yeah, I, I might rent a car the first time and head to Rum Point. The second time I'll rent a car and go up to West Bay uh, and do my own thing. But for those who have never been to Cayman before, you might do the first trip to Seven Mile Beach and the public beach. And you might enjoy that so much, you'll do it again. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you, the second time around, you might go to Stingray City and take the tour there. So, I mean, 
it goes both ways. It all depends on just you know what you want out of it. But you make a good point, uh, certainly uh, with Teresa there. Uh, yeah, uh, this is great. Two separate trips, two separate series of ports to visit. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Gotta love it. Uh, great suggestion either way. Um, uh, Amanda Martin is telling me I'm going on car uh, Carnival Victory, the end of May. Uh, go Key West and Mexico. Will it be busy with the little kids running around? Or should or should I expect them? Uh, end of May, you are telling me, uh, Amanda. I, you know, if it's spring break uh, for public schools, you might be, you might have a lot of kids there. Um, of course, you're on Carnival, right? And so, it, you know, naturally, there should be a lot of children because perfect, perfect line for families, uh, affordable, lots of things for the kids to do. Uh, you know what? Chillax and go with it. Just just go with it. And uh, not to worry. It's a big ship. The Victory, lots of stuff to do. You'll find enclaves that are quiet. If that's what you want, uh, you'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be a great trip, Amanda. Uh, let me know how it goes. Let, let, tell us tell us how it was when you're done with it. Uh, you know, the room and your food and the entertainment. Absolutely. Samantha Farmer is saying, Crash 3X, not all ships do the same things back to back. Some go different places. That's true. It's all a question of, you know, just looking at the itinerary. Uh, vacations to go.com, perfect for that where you can see one ship show me all the cruises that the Eurodam takes between January of 2019 and May of 2019. I want to see all the ship, all the cruises that that ship takes for that window of time. And then just look at it chronologically and just see what itineraries interest you and check the price over here and see if it fits your budget. Maybe something, maybe that the first week is the Eastern Caribbean, the second week is the Western Caribbean. Who knew? Um, Steve Bartley is saying, while we were looking at my uncle's family pictures, child number four asked why there weren't as many pictures of him as the other three. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Uh, child number four asked, were, uh, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's older and they're younger and technology is kicked in. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, I look, I look at my family albums uh, when I visit my mother. I'll take a look at them and my baby pictures, uh, 20 of them. Um, <laughs> my youngest sister, who's 10 years younger than I am. Parents were a little more, a little more well off at that time. <laughs> if you watched my video on how the Beatles made my dad a million dollars in 1964, you got to watch that video. I, I love that video. Uh, you'll understand why. There's a lot more photos of my little sister who's 10 years younger than I am, than of me and my other sister. Tons of photos of her. <laughs> but that was 65. <laughs> I was born in 55. Uh, but yeah, if you're born in 2018, oh, are you going to have photos taken of you? Oh, my goodness. The smartphones are out the second you arrive on this planet. <laughs> they just will not put them away. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Amanda Martin, uh, it'll be my third time in Cozumel. My boyfriend will be taking his first ever trip on a ship and out of the country. Fantastic. And he's going with you. You're the veteran. You'll take good care of him. Perfect. He, he couldn't have had a better uh, situation to go on his first ever cruise. And, of course, leaving the country for the first time. You're the one who's going to be calm and organized. And you'll take good care of him. That's fantastic. Uh, that's Amanda, way to go. Uh, that's going to be a great time. And uh, my first cruise with my wife, went, we went with a couple. They'd done 12, 15 cruises already. And they convinced us to go with them. And they had a cabin at the front end of the ship. We had a cabin towards the back of the ship, both balconies, on the Holland Oosterdam, Holland America Oosterdam, San Diego, down the Mexican Riviera, and back one week. What a great time. What a blast. We had had so much fun and i had no worries because i had a question i could ask my buddy and he'd tell me the truth <laughs> instead of me asking uh, someone in uniform a trick question about the ship and getting the standard pr answer i'd asked him say what's with that and he said oh well that's why they do that <laughs> cruisers are great uh that's why coming to this coming to this chat if you come to this live stream you ask me anything you want about cruising there's about 40 or 50 folks here who are uh, kind of hanging around who know the answer as well. If I don't know the answer, you're going to get an answer or you'll get a second version of the answer. So fantastic. 
Okay, who, what else we got? Elizabeth Breen is saying, my two-day Bahamas Paradise Cruise is coming up. Plus, I added the VIP package for our honeymoon, uh, wine, bridge tour, massages, champagne breakfast, specialty dinner, VIP parking, and boarding. That's going to be okay. <laughs> it's just a two-day cruise. It's quick, quick and easy. You'll be, uh, it'll be over with before you can imagine. Uh, but Elizabeth, I'm going to get the impression that once you're done that, you're going to want to go on a seven-day cruise with a newer, larger ship with all the balconies and all the other features, and you'll be blown away too. You, you'll, you'll, you'll have fun on this one. There's no question you'll have a good time on this one. But uh, uh, you're going to be the perfect passenger for your next cruise. Uh, you, you, you get just a little teaser, a little taste of what this one's about. Uh, but you're going to have some fun on the next one. Really going to be a great cruise. Chevy and First. Hi, all. Uh, I am glad I purchased the Fast to the Fun package for my cruise early. I bought it back in December, and I got it for $69.95. I see it now went up to $89.95 for my cruise. Uh, yeah, this is the trend that is happening here. Uh, I, I, I don't quite know what to make of it. You know, on, in, some, in some way, I get it. I certainly get it from the cruise lines side of it. It's a great add-on, uh, seventy bucks to ninety bucks to charge a, 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 a for you know for this pass for those in the room. Um, they get privileges, uh, certain privileges, early boarding, early disembarkation um, at ports, that kind of thing. But uh, to me, as a as a tightwad, <laughs> for me who is uh, watching my pennies. Uh, it bugs me. Uh, it really bothers me. Um, I'm thinking if I'm buying a, uh, if I'm renting a balcony cabin with my wife for the week and you've sold me on how great this cruise is and how beautiful this ship is, I I'm thinking I'm should be treated nicely. <laughs> I'm in a balcony unit. Uh, but now you're going to put me in a secondary line because you've sold 200, 300, 400 of these special passes. For people that have the same room I have, they have rights that I don't have because they spent this extra money. Kind of bugs me. It's just it's just me though. It's just it's just this old man sitting in front of, com of a computer in Creston, British Columbia, <laughs> letting his opinion be known. But it's the way of the business. These cruise lines are turning into the airlines in a slow motion basis, and they're figuring it out take something away and then give them back something with a little more money added to it and they'll pay for it. And so we used to give them the filet mignon and the ribeye and the prime rib dinner in the dining room. And then we took it away and we offered it in the specialty restaurant over here. And it's only 20 bucks more. That was 10, 15 years ago. It's only 20 bucks more specialty dining. And then they upped the price to 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. Now, you go into certain cruise lines into the steakhouse, it isn't a flat charge anymore. It's a la carte. It's a menu with prices on it. You want the uh, T-bone steak? It's that much more. Uh, it used to be part of the uh, dining package uh, when I used to go on this cruise 15 years ago. But 15 years ago, the cost of cruising was higher. And so the cruise lines have said to us indirectly, look, it used to be we used to charge 2500 bucks for a week, and we gave you everything. And you could have anything you wanted, except for cigarettes and cigars and high-end champagnes and stuff. But wine at dinner was included, and maybe you got a cocktail at dinner. But then we started taking that away, and we charged the extra for that. Uh, but it was 2500 bucks for a week each to, to go on a, a cruise for a week or 10 days. Well, now we're giving you a heck of a deal. We're offering you a balcony. For $599, $699, $749 per person, uh, taxes and fees. But but now we have these extras that you don't have to buy if you don't want them. You don't want to pay extra for the special restaurant. You don't have to pay. But you're not getting that T-bone steak anymore. You're not getting the porterhouse steak anymore for free. And you're not getting the lobster tails. You can't order a second order of lobster tails in those dining rooms anymore. You'll, we'll give you... Uh, meatloaf, mashed potato, gravy, and fries, or or or, or you know vegetables. Uh, we'll give you some pasta. We'll offer you a pizza, 
But you want the high-end stuff, you're going to have to pay extra for that in our specialty dining. But you don't have to if you don't want to because we don't make you do it. So if you want that $5.99, $7.99 range cruise, we're offering you the opportunity to get on our cruise ship at that price range as a starting price, plus tips, plus taxes and fees, obviously. Uh, but those of you who want the old days, you want to be uh, taking a cruise like your mom and dad did 35 years ago? They paid $5,000 30 years ago for that cruise. A new car was $10,000. They paid half a car to go on a one-week cruise. Would you pay half a car today for a one-week cruise? Not most of us. We won't do it because a half a car is $15,000 for a $30,000 car. Who's going to pay $15,000 for a one-week standard cabin uh, cruise. And you can give me all the porterhouses you want. You can offer me lobster tails till the cows come home. You can offer, I'm not paying $15,000 for a week for two. Why? Because these ships have 6,000 passengers, 5,000 passengers, and I can get a balcony for $6.99 each, $7.49 each. And that's not the seaside. The seaside is $4.39 each in a balcony but you might have a few extra add-ons you didn't want. <laughs> but that's the name of the game today. This is 2018, and going forward, these nickel and dime charges will continue. So fun to the pass, 80 to 90 bucks. Specialty dining, 15 to $100 a couple or more, depending on the restaurant. Uh, drink packages. Your wife wants a drink package? You have to buy a drink package because we don't trust that she's going to slip you a beer on her drink card. You have to have a drink card yourself. 100 bucks a day, $200 a day per couple, seven days, $1,400 on top of your cruise. Remember that $2,500 cruise we used to talk about? There it is. Uh, specialty coffees. Um, you bet your specialty dining packages are now available. You can buy a specialty dining package. Here we go with nickel and diming everywhere. And some of you are complaining, and I hear it. Norwegian is the king of nickel and diming. They're unbelievable. Yeah, we'll look at their advertisements. Uh, the third and fourth passenger can sail free. Just pay t tips and uh, port charges and taxes. The third and fourth can come along for nothing. Well, you want a porterhouse steak or a T-bone steak for those guys? Pay extra. But you didn't pay for the fare, did you? There you go. Uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, uh, Nina Frank, just want to say hi. So hi, speech, repeat, lagging a lot tonight. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, let me see if I can make any changes on my um, thingy. Uh, just a second here. I'm not sure if I can do anything about it. Uh, mute, right, people, uh, settings, um, just bandwidth. What if I do this? What if I do, yeah, what if I do this? Let me know if that's any better for you guys uh, or any worse. Okay, I made a slight adjustment on the bandwidth. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just keep repeating for me also. Elizabeth Bean, I've been on seven days. This is just for fun. Um, I'm just looking at my own picture here. It looks okay. Um, Bob, oh, deja vu all over again. That's right, Matt. Oh, my Matt, it's been a long day evening, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, okay, Elizabeth Green, we always do faster the fun, and it's so worth it when you have a family with kids. They get to eat and swim earlier, and the room is ready. I'm willing to pay it. I hear you, Elizabeth. Uh, they're treating you, uh, you know, with uh, with an advanced thing there. You take it, um, and it works for you. That are counting on it, and it's all profits to them because they're just looking after you and disregarding others. It's kind of what's happening. Others are not getting that service and they may not come back. And and I wonder about that for, for these packages that if 10% of the passengers are allowed to buy this pass, the other 90%, you know, they don't, it's not offered to them or, or, or they just don't want to do it. Uh, they might just vote with their feet and not go on that cruise anymore. And I wonder about this, but right now the business is going so well that the numbers are so good on the upside that uh, that the cruise lines can get away with it. 
Um, Elizabeth Breen, uh, Chevy and First saying at Elizabeth, uh, this will be my first cruise and there's only one pool on the Con Conquest. So I plan on being in the pool the first day while it's less crowded. Scott Batchley, I don't know about that. I've been uh, to Alaska four times already and put it, and it always costs around the same. This is over many years. Uh, there you go. Uh, Scott Batchley, fifth coming in 189 days on the Bliss. Not that you're counting, but it's coming in 189 days. Uh, I was going to say today, um, well, my last point is um, a Royal Caribbean, but I'm, I'm going to skip that point. I'm going to save that for my 8 o'clock show. I'm going to mention this little point here, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Uh, the Bliss. Uh, speaking of the Bliss, uh, Scott, uh, you just triggered my thought on that. The ship just came out of the uh, shipyard uh, two days ago, and it floated out the uh, river in northern Germany. It's now in the North Sea. It's beginning its sea trials. It should be handed over in about... Uh, uh, it looks like April 19th, it will be handed over to Norwegian officially by the shipyard. Uh, so we're going through the test now. It's 994 feet long, 136 feet wide, uh, weighs 168,000 gross tons. It's a biggie. Uh, and, of course, it has the go-kart track on the top. At the back there, are two stories, so thousands of feet long go-kart track with the electric carts. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. We're going to hear all about that ship starting April the 19th, big time. We're going to hear all about it. So, yeah, you're going to be on a uh, media a media star. That, that ship's going to get a lot of uh, uh, attention. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for uh, watching today. And thank you for giving me thumbs ups today. Thank you for all your comments for this 5 o'clock show. I'm going off the air now to post this video, get myself ready for my 8 o'clock show. I'll be back on tonight for my second go around, and I will talk then about the Royal Caribbean news. Uh, and other stuff and I welcome any of you to join me if you like I hope you've enjoyed today's show um, If you've given me thumbs ups, thank you very much and uh, if any of you have become subscribers Thank you. Also, I uh, really appreciate you becoming subscribers to this channel I'm gonna say my goodbyes now and I'll see you at 8 o'clock uh, today uh, This is Bruce with traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me on this early show and I'll see you at prime time 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow, Friday, at 5 o'clock. Have a good night, everybody. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care now. Bye-bye.